In this video, we'll be going through the steps and processes of making this effect from finding the nodes all the way to executing in timeline. Now, and if you don't want to spend time watching the tutorial to get the effect, I do have the project file linked on my website. Just go ahead and hit add cart and then type in your email and there you go. Now, and if you do want to go ahead and make it for yourself, we're going to need to download a few things to get started. So the first node to download is Peach's Turbulent Displace. He has a full video where he breaks down and makes the effect, but to download the effect is through this Google Drive and it will be linked in the description. So the next one is in Peach's Discord and it is the Gradient Wrap. You're going to have to scroll all the way, so all the way over into Creamy's Gradient Map and go ahead and just hit download and install. Scroll down a bit and we have Scape's Dream Glow, which I think is my favorite glow. The next one is Smokey's Inner Shadow, and I use this as a substitute for Peach's Inner Glow. If you don't have the All Effects Pack, go ahead and use this. It's pretty much the same effect. So the last thing is the Time Displacement Views by Pabby on the We Suck Less forum. Go ahead and make your account to see uh, these download links. The one that I'm actually using, if I scroll down, is by Danell. Go ahead and download this. In order to recall them by hitting shift space and just typing in the names, we're going to go ahead and download them into our node folder. So to do that, go ahead into the bottom corner here and just double click and it will bring up this panel. Go ahead into path maps, scroll down till you find macros, right click that and then just hit the top one there and it will bring up your macros folder. So go ahead and select all the things you've downloaded and just drag them onto here. And then when you go ahead and restart Fusion, you should be able to recall them using the shift space select tool. Okay, so once we're back inside of DaVinci, I went and grabbed a Fusion Comp and just stretched it out till it was exactly 10 seconds long. Is that 10 seconds? Yeah, that's 10 seconds. So now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this three times by holding Alt and dragging across whilst clicking, sorry. So then we have uh, four duplicates all together. Uh, this one's going to be our main comp and the rest is going to be what we're actually going to go ahead and work into. Okay, so this first comp here, if I just open this in the Fusion page, is going to be where we place our assets. So just adding in the background so I can actually build something on top of this. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Apple logo. Like I mentioned before, you can just drag in anything. This logo is quite big, so I'm going to bring that down and that should be okay. I'm going to make that a lot smaller actually, and that should be fine. Okay, so going back inside of the edit page here and just going ahead and displaying the stacked timelines, I'm going to go ahead and compound clip this. I have mine bounded to C. If you don't know how to change keybinds, I'll leave a link to that video. For the sake, I'm going to go ahead and name it logo because we're using the Apple logo. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Oh, before we actually delete this, I'm going to right click and hit open in timeline. So then going back into the main timeline, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Okay, so going into the Fusion Comp, again, I'm going to bring in a background and pipe this in and just decrease the alpha just as something to build upon. So we're going to grab in that compound clip. For me, it was logo because we named it earlier. Okay, bringing in a background and piping this in, we will change the color and I'm going to go and change the color to a light gray. Feel free to copy my hex code if you want the exact color. Whilst it's selected, I'm going to hit shift space and type in inner glow and I'll paste the pages one in. I'm going to increase the blur size to 19 and then just increase that erode. And like mentioned before, I'll leave a link to Smokey's inner shadow, which is basically the same thing as the inner glow. I'm going to hit shift space and just type in glow and just select that default glow there and pipe this into our timeline. Just so you can see the glow activated a little bit better, I'm going to increase the alpha, but I'll increase my glow to somewhere around here and then increase the actual glow itself. And we are done with this portion. Just make sure to go ahead and decrease that alpha. And then we're going to head back into the edit page. I'm going to compound clip this and just name it glow. And then moving on to our other fusion clip. Okay, I'm going to bring in a background, but this time I'm not going to decrease the alpha. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit gradient. Hit control G to bring up the guidelines. And then I'm just going to bring this up like so. Okay, hitting the empty space, I'm going to hit shift space and then pull in that gradient map like so. And then I will pipe the gradient map into the output. Okay, so with this second one selected, you can choose any one. I'm just going to choose the second one. We're going to delete them until we have only five of these triangles. All right, so once you have five triangles selected, we're going to use the black actually. I'm going to pipe this in here. I'll move this over because 
that's where it's gonna be. On this first one, I'm just gonna deselect all the colors till it's red. Selecting the second one, I'm gonna use this hex code for this color, this yellow. For the next one, I'm gonna use this hex code and just pull that in. And then for the last color, we're gonna use this. And I'm gonna go ahead and move it till we have something like this. Okay, cool. In order to blend these a lot better, I'm gonna add a blur and I'm gonna go ahead and choose Gaussian blur. And then I'll go ahead and increase the slider so that blends in a lot nicer. Okay, so we're gonna move on to animating the gradient and we're gonna do that with expressions. So going over into offset and just moving this about, you can see that by moving the offset, we animate the position of the gradient. As you can see, once we reach a certain point, it kind of just stops. And in order to fix that, we're gonna go ahead and hit repeat so that when we are moving the offset, it repeats. Resetting that to center noun, right clicking and hitting expression. We're gonna remove this and just type in time. Okay, so when we play it, nothing happens. And usually with the time expression, if I just view this and add in a background and just crop this, for example, going over into our transform, going to angle, expression, I'm just hitting time here to show, if I just view this as well, to show that this should work, the time should work. And you can go ahead and times it by, let's say three to make it quicker as well, just to show that it should work. And I have come up with a fix. I don't know why this works, but I did go ahead and just divide it by 50. So then the gradient starts to move. Now, and I have no idea why dividing it by 50 works. It just does. And what's interesting here, if we select our first background and just move the values, you can see that the, the background affects the gradient map. So we want the thing to go backwards. Now, and you can place this transform anywhere, but I'm just gonna choose here and go ahead and flip that. So it goes from up to down. Also to add, the closer this value gets to one, the quicker the time expression gets. So let's say, just, just say 10 just to demonstrate, you can see that's moving quite quick. And I found that 50 is the nice middle ground. So having this selected and hitting shift space, I'm just gonna type in turb and then just hit the turbulent displace. Now, if you're unsure, a turbulent displace basically displaces the image based on the white and black values. And all this displaced is, is just using a normal displace and then pipe in a fast noise into the mat and then just increasing the refraction here and then going over and increasing the fast noise scale. I'll leave a link to an in-depth tutorial on that. But all the turbulent displace nodes is just these two nodes combined together. So reorganizing and placing our turbulent displays above, go over and hit bubble wrap. I'm gonna hit our reflection to 3.2 and then bring down our scale to somewhere, somewhere around there will do. And then I'll also just bring down that contrast a little bit. And then going over into the displace and changing the contrast to one and then the scale to 0.98. Now, these are the settings that I use in my original comp, but it really doesn't matter all too much. Just go ahead and play around and find something that looks appealing to you. For me, I think this looks nice for now. Going over into your mirror controls as well, I just hit duplicate and that should be fine for now. So back inside the edit page, compound clip this, I'm just gonna name this G map, short for gradient map, and then just hit create. Okay, so we're individually just gonna open these inside of the edit page or inside of their own timeline for easy access. So we can just go back in and, you know, change anything we want. This is the logo. And it's better than just going over into our media pool and then right clicking and then hit opening into timeline. Okay, so in our main comp, again, pulling in a background, we're gonna leave the alpha because we actually wanna see what we're doing. We're gonna grab glow and our gradient map. Grab the glow and just pipe this into the mask input of our gradient map. And then select the empty space, hit shift space, and just type in time, and then the time displacement should pop up. So pulling in our input here, we're gonna pipe this into the input, which is our yellow, and then pipe this into our gradient. So nothing's happening right now because we haven't touched any of the settings. Just gonna go and pipe this in so we can view this. The time displacement is basically gonna displace our image based on these white and black values. I wanna also note that this is quite an intensive effect on your PC. Okay, so going over and clicking blend, decrease the strength all the way to minus, 
and you can see that we're pretty much already there. Now, by moving the strength, you can see how the displacement moves as well. I'm going to go ahead and leave the strength here to have the gradient at the bottom. And then by moving the midpoint, we can see how the gradient. And then when caching this out, you can see that it gives quite an interesting gradient. Now, if I wanted to, I can go back into the gradient map here and then going over into our expression. And let's say I want to increase this to 70. And then I'll go ahead and cache this out because this is the new gradient that we did, the, the one with the 70 for the time displacement. If you don't know how to cache, by the way, go over into playback, render cache, and then choose smart and it will play back smoothly. Also, another tip is to select these three lines here and just hit show all frames. So then when we go back into our main timeline and then I bring in our new gradient map. Oh, I actually don't have to do that because you can see here that it's caching again. So I'll just go ahead and delete this. Okay, so going back into the edit page here, sometimes it doesn't send that information out. Uh, this is still the old one. So just duplicate it and bring it above and then that will force it then and delete the other one and it will force it then to recache. And, and now let's say I wanted the gradient to go backwards. So I would go over into my gradient map and then deselect that transform so that it rises instead of falling. And then again, we'll cache. So then now we can see that our gradient rises from the bottom to the top. So one last thing to really finish the effect off is I'm going to add an adjustment clip. I'm going to hit shift space and type in glow and I'm going to select dream glow now, and off rip that absolutely destroys it and makes it a bit too bright. So view the glow inside of the second viewer. First thing is I'm going to increase my luminance. So then when I go ahead and hit glow only, we can only see which parts of the actual asset is being affected by the glow. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to uncheck glow. One last thing is adding in a color curves and then hitting control A to select all. And just bringing in our curves like so.